So recording now. And I'm going to hand this over to Tim uh, Constian, who is uh, the Sponsor Fulfillment Coordinator. Um, so Tim, go ahead and kick us off. Hi, everybody. I've uh, worked with many of you before. I may be nagging at some time, but uh, a lot of the deadlines are approaching, so uh, maybe I won't be so annoying. But as Megan mentioned, this will be recorded, and it will be stored in the event kit. Um, if you missed the last uh, webinar we had, that one was more about, about your sponsorship, the coordination activities, any logistics, any shipping information. This webinar is really going to be more about maximizing your sponsorship. Um, you know, Megan mentioned it before, we are so appreciative of your support and the excitement around DrupalCon LA is huge. You can actually feel it around the office. And we're all excited here and we hope you're excited. But uh, ultimately, you're here for more than just supporting the Drupal community. And so this is really a good chance to learn new ways, how to, you know, maximize it, how to make the most out of your benefits and really, um, have your DrupalCon LA experience the best it can be. So many of you do know Megan. She's a pro. She's been around since really the beginning of the association, been a part of everything Drupal. So she really is the master at this. And you can learn a lot from her. But uh, if you or your employees are miss missing it, again, this will be stored in the, um, the event kit. And you can go back and review it there. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to kick it off to Megan. Feel free to uh, type any questions in the question section, and we will get to them as best as we can. And uh, you know, if you have any follow-up questions, direct them to me on my email or my Skype. We've uh, messaged quite a bit. So, uh, Megan, let's get started. Okay, thanks. Well, that was quite the introduction. Uh, I've never been called the master before, but I'll take it. So, uh, why don't we just <laughs> dive into this presentation? Um, and hopefully everyone's seeing it. If you are not able to see it, just uh, put a note in the question section and uh, we'll just fix anything as we go along. All right, so everyone is sponsoring for slightly different reasons. Um, and what I've found over the years is there's three main reasons why people sponsor. One is to, uh, for business reasons, obviously. You're looking for leads. You want to do business development with other companies. Uh, so we'll talk some about uh, how, how to really uh, use DrupalCon for that purpose. Other people are there to recruit talent. Uh, we're going to have you know, thousands of developers and site builders, um, as well as other job functions at DrupalCon. It's a great chance to highlight your company culture and your jobs and interface with people that are possibly looking for a position. Uh, and so the other reason people sponsor uh, is to support the community, to demonstrate that they're one of the community and a leader in the community, as well as a thought leader. So they might be uh, sponsoring to highlight some of their modules um, and, and trying to get more traction with that module within the within the community. So those are the three reasons I see people uh, wanting to sponsor. Uh, but regardless of what you want to get out of this DrupalCon, um, there's really four simple steps to help you achieve your goals. And one is you have to be proactive. You have to really start your marketing as you're leading up to DrupalCon, through DrupalCon, and after. And I uh, will talk about some steps that you can take. You also want to make sure you really know what your goal is and that it's measurable uh, and that you have a really clear, crisp message that you are pushing out uh, <clears throat> to DrupalCon attendees and that your whole company who's attending is part of that team. And then the last one is uh, you want to look at all of your channels. Um, so not just the team members who are going to be going, but also what are you doing with social media and blogs and uh, your newsletters and things like that. So um, we will kind of break that down a little bit uh, and see what that looks like for each of the different reasons you might be sponsoring. So as I mentioned, you need to be proactive. Um, and so that means even starting now, you can start promoting your sponsorship. Uh, we recommend that you contact your database and followers, uh, on, in social media, really let them know that you're going to be there. Maybe your company is presenting, let them know that, uh, what session got selected. Um, 
tell them to check you out at the exhibit hall, give them your booth number. You can even um, do raffles, let them know like maybe you want to raffle off an iPad or whatever is cool now. You are even welcome to raffle off any of your unused DrupalCon conference passes. When you are doing your promotions through social media, we put in the handles and the hashtags that you'll want to use just so that you get even more uh, traction and, um, and reach through your social media channel. So you'll see that here. And these are some of the things you can do beforehand. Um, during the DrupalCon, you want to think about all of the people you're sending. So whether they're going to be working in your, um, your booth or they might be presenting, they might be a developer who is going to sessions or uh, going to the sprints. This is, your, this is your team, this is your street team, so to speak. So you really wanna give them a uniform so that your brand stands out wherever they go. And even if they're developers, we highly recommend that you give everyone business cards because everyone's there to network. Uh, and you can think about branding your business cards beyond just your you know, company logo. Uh, you can put your message on there. So, for example, if you're recruiting talent, you might want to have your the jobs URL on there or um, just bullet out the uh, positions that you have open. And that way, even if it's a developer who's talking to someone, they can just hand this out to people. So that's one thing that we recommend is just uh, make sure people know you're there. Um, and before you get on site, sit down with everyone who's going and let them know what your goals are. Um, and what the message is and give them metrics so for example if it's we want to have so many leads uh to coming out of this business you know your team should sit down and, and know what that is and what the message is what your elevator pitch is and make sure that everyone understands that you are to have these kinds of conversations uh and maybe even we'll go into some more detail about how you can set up meetings beforehand with um you know kind of like your target audience and Make sure that the conversations are, are going to happen so that you leave the event um, with the outcome that you, you were hoping for. Uh, also, during the event, you want to uh, really keep your name out there. Uh, every, you know, it's a great opportunity to be blogging. Some people will um, do a blog every night, kind of like a recap and get it out into social media. Um, and then, of course, you could be doing live tweeting during the Dries Note or any important sessions. It helps you just really keep your brand out there and be seen as a thought leader. Uh, and make sure that you are participating in all of the ways that have this organic networking. We have birds of a feather. That's a chance to come together and um, talk, kind of meet people who want to talk about a common topic that you get to choose or other people choose, but you can look for birds of a feather, meet people uh, of a similar interest as you. You can go to the special events that are happening at night and you can find out what the community is um, doing in terms of events by going to the event site under the community section and we'll be promoting where all the sponsor parties are. And of course, we even just have the hallway track it's not an official track, but you'll see a lot of people will go to DrupalCon and not even go into sessions. They just walk around the hallway and network and talk, and they get a lot of business done there. So just make sure you have people that are available to float around and have those organic conversations. Um, and then, of course, if you did get a booth as part of your sponsor package, just make sure whatever your message is, it's really clear what you're promoting and uh, have it aligned with your goals. Do different things to bring people into your booth, whether it's raffles or uh, collecting cards, business cards from people, or whatever you need to do just to capture names so that you can then follow up with them. Because afterwards, you want to make sure you do follow up with all your contacts that you're making throughout the event. And again, just reinforce the message and your call to action. Um, and we recommend that you get your follow up email out within 48 hours. Uh, we highly recommend that you write this before you go to DrupalCon and you have it ready to just push a button and send out to your contacts because it is a marathon going to a DrupalCon and it is exhausting. And even 48 hours after DrupalCon, you may really not want to uh, do a lot of work. So we, we recommend that you plan ahead and, and line that up so that it's just a push of a button. So those are just some high levels of what to do before, during, and after a DrupalCon, regardless of what you're trying to uh, achieve with your sponsorship.
But let me drill down into those three different areas, the uh, lead generation, talent acquisition, and uh, community and thought leadership. So for lead generation, uh, this is a sponsoring. It gives you an opportunity to acquire new clients. What we recommend is uh, you go to the URL that I have here. It's the attendee profile page. When a person registers for DrupalCon, they have the opportunity to say, yes, make my attendee information public. And so this URL takes you there so you can see all the people who are willing to um, communicate with you. Uh, you can click on each individual's uh, picture and profile and email them directly. We highly recommend that you're very careful in how you use this because uh, we have had people in the past use web crawlers to uh, get all the profiles and their emails and just email them, uh, all of them. And it came off as spam and it really was not well received. Um, and so we recommend that you do go through, you think about who you really want to talk to, and you email each person directly through the channel that they've um, allowed you to communicate with them. And it's a great opportunity to say who you are and why you want to talk with them and set up a meeting so that you can um, have a more meaningful conversation face-to-face. -face. So that's one thing that we highly recommend is that you make sure you go into these conferences with meetings set up. And then, of course, uh, you, you might want to think about giving your staff some goals. So give them goals for how many sales meetings they should have, how many conversations they need to have, um, and how many business cards they collect. You know, if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. And uh, we just always find the more metrics you put around things, the, the more you come out with a better outcome. So there's some suggestions for new clients. Some other things are you can just find new clients just by being available. So you might have some people uh, in your sponsor booth, but make sure you have someone else who can roam around and do that business development and strike up conversations at the birds of a feather and the social events. Uh, we also have a VIP happy hour on Wednesday that you're all invited to. And so I highly recommend that you go to that. Um, it's mostly, uh, you know, the sponsors and the supporters that, it's the Drupal shops, uh, software companies, hosting companies that attend there. And so that's something that you, you definitely want to put on your calendar. So those are some ways to get some new clients out of DrupalCon. Uh, but you can also use DrupalCon as a sales tool to reach into your existing pipeline. Um, you know, it, you can go back to lost deals even uh, and let them know where you're going to be. Perhaps you want to invite them and, and see if you can kind of resurrect that relationship. I'm sure you have active leads um, that um, you're just looking for another reason to nurture them and, 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 and reach out and touch them one more time with some communications. Uh, and so we can easily help you do that. Um, and then also you might have some existing clients that you want to expand the footprint within that client. And, and so DrupalCon can help with that as well. So what we, we recommend for all of these categories, lost deals, active leads, um, existing clients, is to invite them to DrupalCon. You get to really kind of be their Sherpa uh, for DrupalCon. Let them really see that you're the expert. Um, bring them to your employee sessions or other sessions that help reinforce your expertise. You can host a dinner and invite them to come and join you where you can talk to them some more about Drupal and your services. Of course, while you're uh, on site, you can show them around. Um, you know, it's not just the sessions, but it's the coder lounge where uh, people are working or the sprints. Uh, there's just so many things that, you know, depending on their interests, you can really find out what their interests are and, and make sure you walk them over to that or even introduce them to some of the rock stars that are there. So to reach out to them, we, we'd certainly recommend that you send them a, a newsletter or promote your presence there in blogs and, um, and uh, social media and, and just really uh, give, give them a reason to come and talk to you one more time and, and help move them through the pipeline or expand their, expand their engagement with you.
so that's uh, how to get some leads from new clients as well as through your existing pipeline. Uh, but there's another way of generating leads, and that's through partnerships. So many Drupal shops especially say that um, you know they have a lot of leads, but perhaps their, their bench is not available, uh, and they're looking for the right person to pass the lead on. Or maybe there's some downtime with their bench, and so they're looking to take on some special projects. Or maybe you even have a certain expertise, and you'd like to go to market with someone um, and uh, kind of capture a special segment. So that's where we start talking about partnerships. And I see a lot of this happening at DrupalCon. I've even seen partnerships form and turn into mergers, which is pretty exciting. We're starting to see a little bit more of that in the Drupal uh, ecosystem, too. And so this is a great time to, um, if you, you know, especially if you're on the show floor, um, look around, see who else is on the show floor. And, uh, you know, when people are in sessions and it's quiet uh, in the exhibit hall, go ahead and start talking to each other. You know, there's probably a lot of business that you can drum up just by uh, collaborating. And again, if you know that this is a direction you want to go, take a look at the sponsor page and the companies that are out there. Check out their their um, profiles and set up some meetings in advance. Uh, so you make sure that um, you have these conversations because Drupal cons can be really distracting. So you don't want to leave a Drupal con without, um, you know, having these conversations take place. And again, I can't reinforce it enough. You want people to work in the booth, but you definitely want to make sure there's someone who's having these meetings and is not tied to the booth all the time. So those are a couple different ways that you can take advantage of DrupalCon for lead generation. Uh, so talent acquisition is a big part of why people sponsor. And so if you have a booth, you want to make sure it's really clear that you're hiring. So put up a sign. Uh, make sure that when people come visit you at the booth that you can hand out a flyer that explains what the jobs are. Right? It's a very strong call to action. Again, you can set up meetings in advance, go through the attendee profile if you see people that match um, what you're looking for in terms of new talent, go ahead and tell them that you're really interested in having a conversation and let them know a conversation never hurts. Um, we also have our new job board uh, called Drupal Jobs and uh, Tim is going to be sending you a coupon code so that you can post jobs. We highly recommend you take advantage of this. Uh, and again, make sure you have business cards to hand out to everyone, whether it's your developer staff that's going or your sales team. Everyone's part of networking, so just make sure you have business cards to hand out, and your business cards can even promote some of your jobs. And whatever you do with your messaging, I highly recommend that you demonstrate why your company is great. There's a lot of companies to work for in the Drupal community. So why is your culture the one that is um, so special. Um, I highly recommend that you uh, really think about that. Capture it in pictures. Capture it in a list of your benefits. Uh, you can really use that as your messaging uh, in social media and blogs. Um, you know, and it's really important to show that you're living your culture. So if your team's getting together and doing a special team dinner or you're having fun together, take pictures of that and tweet it out. Uh, with a call to action of like, come work for us. And do the same with blogs and your other different channels. Um, but that's just really one way I see companies separating themselves from the pack. Because, like I said, uh, Drupal Talent, they can choose to work anywhere. But there's certain things that they're looking for. It's not always just salary. Salary is always a thing. A lot of them are looking for, you know, flexibility, for that work-life balance, opportunities for um, challenges, and uh, getting to work on special new projects and, and learning and professional development. So those are the kinds of things that you want to call out. Another reason people sponsor is to show that they are community or thought leader. And so if you have a booth, again, just highlight that message. If you are a supporting partner, we are going to give you a sign that you can put on your table. Maybe you want to even bake that into your messaging a little bit to show that you're not just someone who's built a business with Drupal, but you're giving back in all the ways you're giving back, whether it's being a supporting partner, contributing to the Drupal 8 Accelerate Fund, um, of course, all of the code that you're contributing, because code is king. So make sure you highlight your modules 
um, at your booth and in your social media, like just get the word out there. And, um, you know, you could even attend BOFs. You might see that there's uh, a need to really talk about certain things about the community. Maybe it's um, something about being a camp organizer, or maybe it is about certain t- uh, functionality that really, you know, you really want the community to come around and talk about. And you can schedule a birds of a feather session or BOF as we call it, uh, and help lead that conversation. Uh, really put yourself in a position of leadership. You can also look to see what birds of a feather um, have been scheduled by others and attend and show your leadership by adding to the conversation. Uh, again, of course, you can show your your uh, community and thought leadership just by highlighting everything through all of your communication channels. And, um, and uh, again, there's nothing better than just showing that you really live your values. Um, and one way to do that is go to the Community Summit on Monday. It's a free event. If you are a community leader, go ahead to that. Uh, you can find more information on the event site. Uh, and this is where community leaders talk about ways, better ways to run camps or better ways to um, promote the Sprint Mentor Program. Uh, so I highly recommend that event. I also say that joint, if you can, become a Sprint Mentor or have your staff become Sprint Mentors. Kathy Faze is looking for people who will work with our new community members and show them how to get ready for a Sprint and show them how to contribute on Friday. I went through that program a little bit, and I have to say it just accelerated my understanding. I have a lot more to do, but um, I am eternally grateful for the Sprint mentors who helped me, uh, and, and one of them was Bluehost, uh, and I will never forget that it was Bluehost who reached out and helped me. Uh, it's a great way to align your brand with um, kind of like the ethos of our community, and um and anyhow, I just can't encourage you enough to have your staff sign up to be a Sprint mentor. Really good for your company. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you can even just have your staff go to the Sprints on Friday. They can go as Sprint mentors or they could just go as contributors. Many of them, I'm sure, are contributing. And, of course, make sure they're wearing your T-shirt so that, you know, when they're at the table and uh, people are looking at them, that they see your brand. So these are just a couple different ways that you can highlight your community and thought leadership if that is one of your, your goals there. And so, I, you know, it's a simple presentation. Um, I just kind of go through some of the real, probably obvious things, but, you know, it's always good to refresh uh, how to get the most out of your DrupalCon, um, to really be prepared and, and know in advance what you want to get out of it and break it down into some tac- tactics that are measurable. And so that's what I did around those three main areas around lead generation, talent recruitment, and uh, thought leadership. So I'll just leave you with this one slide that just kind of summarizes it for networking 101. Um, Because I don't know, maybe you are a little introverted. I know I can get a little shy and I have to really force myself to get out there sometimes, even though that might be shocking to some of you who know know me. Um, But networking is one of the biggest things you can do at DrupalCon with all those people. So... Networking 101, bring plenty of business cards. Make sure you have an elevator pitch. So when you talk to people, you know exactly what you want to say. Uh, try not to make it sound too salesy, but, you know, have your have your pitch ready. And DrupalCon can be a bit of a family reunion. So try to, gra- try to avoid gravitating to people you know and start looking around for new people. And, of course, sometimes that can be a little awkward. Um, and so there's different openers you can use, and I, I'm just really blunt and I just say, hi, I haven't met you yet. Just (laughs) say it how it is. I haven't met you yet. I want you. My name's Megan. And I will strike up conversations with people. And, um, you know, also, if you see people that are just standing by themselves, I just encourage you to talk to them. You find that that lone person in the corner, just go say hi. Uh, I say that for two reasons. One, they could be your next customer. And two, it's really intimidating to go to a DrupalCon by yourself. So when you walk into there and it feels like this family reunion and you've been invited, but you don't know anyone, it's hard to break in. So, you know, it's just also being a nice ambassador of our community. And so, again, when you're talking with people, try not to sell anything. People don't love like the hard sale, um, but they they do value relationships. So, you know, when you're talking to them, find out more about them. Tell them a bit about yourself and your company and. Ask them what they're looking for, what, why they came to DrupalCon, and uh, they might give you some good hooks 
uh, where you can kind of position yourself as you get to know them a little bit more. And uh, another nice trick is everyone's handing out business cards. So what, what's going to make someone hold on to yours? Um, I usually write something on the business card and hand it to them. Uh, it's a little bit more personal, and um, they tend to hold on to it. And, of course, hold on to all of theirs because they, within 48 hours after the event, you can get all their names into a spreadsheet and send that email out. And, and uh, hopefully you'll start building a pipeline with all those contacts. So just to recap, to get the most out of your sponsorship, be proactive, define your goal and your message, get your whole team that's going to um, push that out. Uh, they are one of your channels. Use social media, use blogs, use your newsletter, do an email campaign to your existing uh, database, uh, and make sure whatever you're doing, it's you have defined metrics so that way you really know what success looks like to you and you can decide afterwards if you achieve those goals. So those are the, uh, that's pretty much the presentation. And if you have any questions, go ahead and post them now. And in the meantime, I'm just going to hand this back over to Tim, and he can close us out. So Tim, you want to take it over? Yes, I do. Thank you, Megan. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I personally found that very helpful. This will be my first con, and uh, that was loads of information that I hope you guys uh, are going to absorb. So a few things I want to touch on that are more on the fulfillment and coordination side. Um, so Megan mentioned the VIP sponsorship happy hour. Uh, everyone that was a sponsor is invited. I just need to know who's going to attend so we can get them on the list, per se. So if you just want to send me over uh, the name and an email address of whoever is going to be going to that uh, sponsorship VIP uh, appreciation happy hour, please just go ahead and do that. And uh, she also mentioned the Drupal job codes. Uh, it's basically 30 days prior to the con. So April 11th, I'm going to be sending you all a coupon code similar to the code I sent you for the DrupalCon ticket itself. Uh, if you post a job, the job will be available for 30 days, but you can post a job all the way up to uh, the con itself and even to the last day of the con. So the job will be live extending past that 30-day period. Uh, one last thing I would like to uh, kind of make note out there is a lot of you guys are sponsoring modules, um, you know, a little bit more complicated sponsorships or some of you just need some more information regarding logistics, booth setup. Uh, a lot of sponsors have found this helpful and so have I. If you want to, I'm totally open and flexible to setting up personal one-on-one -on -one meetings to go over really anything. You know, a phone call or Skype call, Google Hangout can save us loads of time rather than doing emails back and forth where you know, it could take multiple days to get a question answered, especially if we're working on different time zones. I'm pretty flexible. You know, I can stay late, wake up early, and get it going out there. But um, I know a lot of sponsors have found it helpful, and I, like I said, so have I. So don't hesitate to reach out to me directly, uh, phone call, email, Skype, Google Hangout. They all work for me, and you all have my contact information. So I just want to make that and put that out there. And again, you know, we're so appreciative of you guys' support. We're excited. We hope you're excited. And um, basically, that's going to conclude this webinar. Again, this is going to be posted uh, on the event kit. Uh, so if you want to recap it, if you want to share it with someone, or you just liked it so much and you loved what Megan had to hear, you just want to keep listening to it over and over again. So thank you all for attending. Um, I f I'm assuming I'll be in contact with a lot of you, and I look forward to actually meeting a lot of you. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you at DrupalCon LA. Great. Thanks, Tim. All right, I'm going to close this out, and then we can get the recording out to everybody. All right, thanks, everyone, for joining. <laughs>